Win a free signed copy of my book, It Takes a Criminal to No One. When you make It Takes a Criminal to No One your very first download on Audible. Simply email proof of your verified Audible download to Molier Expressions at yahoo.com. All right. Welcome to the Convict Podcast, folks. I'm your host, Molière Dimash, and we are just going to dive straight into this one. Um, this might be the craziest uh, piece of news that I've broken in a while. I know you guys have heard a lot of crazy stories on this podcast, but this one takes the cake. So... Uh, Let's get right into it, folks. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about the case of Michael Baker. And unfortunately, he lost his life at Santa Rosa Correctional Institution. And uh, this is multifaceted crazy. So crazy, I, I really don't know where to start with this. But let's start with the fact that he had his gold teeth kicked out of his mouth. Now, uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, they're skeptical about uh, the legend of, about the jar full of gold teeth at Lake Butler. And uh, some people uh, believe that, you know, it's a myth. Some people uh, believe that it's true. I seen it with my own eyes. I know that it's true. But I'm concerned that they're carrying on this practice at other institutions. This is the first time I've heard of gold teeth being kicked out at an institution outside of Lake Butler. Um, I get the feeling there might also be a jar at Santa Rosa. Now, we know that Santa Rosa has its share of mysterious deaths. But something that I noticed uh, that I haven't heard anybody talking about is that Santa Rosa uh, presses charges on inmates for uh, assaults the most, more than any other institution, and it's always the inmates on CM. They're the first ones to cry foul about people hurting them, but they have the most cases of, uh, some of the, the, the highest cases of use of force. And uh, me personally, I'm all but certain that the the cases that they arrest these inmates for and give them more time in prison are fabricated. However, um, that's unrelated to the levels of crazy involved in this case. So um, he has his gold teeth kicked out of his mouth. Now, his problems start when he arrives at the institution. Um, it, the through my investigation, I did not find out how he ended up on CM or uh, what was the case uh, with his placement at Santa Rosa. But uh, he suffered from sickle cell. He had sickle cell. And throughout his entire prison bid, he was given uh, a lot of time for uh, selling drugs within a thousand feet of a church. And as far as uh, he had been serving his time, his sickle cell had been kept under control because he had been receiving his medication. And when he got to Santa Rosa, they weren't giving it to him. So he starts writing grievances. Now, being on uh, at any close management facility or any facility that has a close management unit where that mentality is prevalent amongst the staff members, uh, you, you, you can go ahead and flush adequate medical care down the toilet. It's not going to happen. So he uh, writes grievances and he complains to his family that he's requesting his medication from uh, the medical staff and they're telling him, oh, just give it up and die. Sit your black ass down. And th those are quotes that he, you know he quoted from the medical staff. That sounds oddly familiar, folks. If you remember the case with uh, that inmate at Swanee, Christopher Sanders, who was housed at another uh, close management facility, they were telling him all the same things. They were ripping up his sick call forms in his face. Remember Randall Jordan Aparo? Uh, he complained he was at Franklin in the confinement unit. 
complaining that he wasn't getting his medication. The nurse complained to the captain and they gassed him to death and they killed him. So, uh, Mr. Baker, his problems start by, um, you know, complaining that he's not getting his medication. He uh, has his family calling the institution. They gang up on him and they kick his gold teeth out of his mouth. Nothing's done. So, um, they gas him for writing the grievances. And, um, you know, j just like I said, he complained uh, about medical issues. They gassed him for writing the grievances. Same exact thing that happened with Randall Jordan Aparo. Um, if you watched the film yesterday, you saw it was the same exact thing that happened to me. And, you know, that's why I take these cases so personal, because every time I see these guys, I uh, imagine myself like this picture that you're looking at. You could have very well been looking at a picture of me in the event that somebody got out of prison and decided to stay connected to the struggle. It could have very well been me. And uh, all you would have heard was the report saying that I was some wild man kicking on my door and banging. And we know that's not the case. Do you know the uh, office of the attorney general? They were supposedly in investigating uh, this case that happened to him. Now, remember, we haven't even gotten to the crazy yet. I'm just laying the foundation uh, for, you know, how, how this whole thing uh, manifested. Uh, they reported that they were investigating the case. I checked and the case is closed. It's no longer active. There's no assist, nothing at all. The case is closed. So um, his family is simply without answers. And they have the letters of him, you know, expressing fear for his life. They have the copies of his grievances, everything. So this is where it starts to get crazy. They refused to do an autopsy on his body. He died in this prison cell. Now, they had already gassed him. Uh, they had already kicked his gold teeth out of his mouth. He dies in the cell. Now, according to uh, what I read, his roommate was reporting that uh, he just started. Uh, he woke up in the middle of the night and he was screaming in agony because of stomach problems, chest pains, had diarrhea. The whole kit and caboodle. For those of you who read the book, It Takes a Criminal to Know One. Does this sound familiar at all? Poison. Remember, I told you when I was at Swanee, they poisoned me. And after what I discovered investigating this case, I understand what this is all about now. I was, you know, I had a, I thought I had a general understanding of it. It's way deeper than you could imagine. Check this out. So uh, he's expressing some of the same symptoms that I complained about when they poisoned me. Gastrointestinal pains. And the cure for me was uh, a medication called retinity. And that's remember when I was in the, in the book, I was talking about when they poisoned me, I had gastrointestinal problems. I felt like my chest was on fire, like somebody had lit a match inside of my chest, thought I was having a heart attack. And uh, I discovered that they were putting uh, dishwasher fluid, not this detergent, dishwasher fluid inside of the food that was tearing people's insides up and people were having heart attacks left and right and were dying. OK, they die. Swanee send the body to Lake Butler and let Lake Butler claim the death. That's how come, uh, you know, Lake Butler's more on the mortality site. Lake Butler's list is endless. <laughs> they take everybody's dead and they claim that they died uh, at Lake Butler when they're just straight up pulling in dead bodies. And uh, that's what was happening at Swanee while I was there, left and right. That's what happened to me. This man is expressing uh, he, he, he's, he's, he's uh, having the same symptoms that I complained about. And then he dies. He has these chest pains. His chest is burning. Extreme diarrhea drops dead. So um, the medical examiner, Dr. Andrea Minyard, she's 
the key here. This is where it gets crazy. She refuses to do an autopsy. So the family is, uh, they're imploring the Department of Corrections, please do an autopsy on my loved one. We want to know exactly how he died because we believe he died from medical neglect. We believe there was abuse involved. Can we please have uh, an autopsy performed so we know what his cause of death was? So um, we have a uh, rising star in uh, Florida politics. Uh, one of uh, Rick Scott's people uh, named McKinley Lewis. He straight up tells them, no, we're not going to implore anybody to do anything. Why? Because if an inmate dies in an unattended death, performing an autopsy is discretionary. I had no idea. That, that's just, this is just the first bit of crazy, folks. That the way that these Republicans have written these laws in Florida is to where if an inmate dies as a result of an unattended death, they don't have to do an autopsy. So take a look at this graph. More than three quarters of these inmate deaths that have happened in the state of Florida have been chalked up as natural deaths. How many of them were unattended deaths? Think about that. That means all of those natural deaths didn't even have autopsies performed on them. Isn't that something? And as a matter of fact, while we're um, while we are uh, discussing this case, I'm gonna pull him up right now on my phone, and I'm gonna see exactly what they ruled his death as and it, it, it's critical to understand this because uh, we're going to see if they actually gave him a ruling without an autopsy being performed and it was ruled as natural there's an official finding of a natural death and there was no autopsy performed on this man so uh that's the loophole. So now I understand why they were poisoning the inmates because they can just say, oh, an inmate had a heart attack. He died in his room. We didn't see what happened. It was an unattended death, uh, unattended death. And uh, that's it. The medical examiner sees, oh, un unattended. I don't have to do anything. And you never know. So that means 75% uh, of these inmate deaths were never given an autopsy and that's 75 percent of, of, of you got to think about how many people have died in the department of corrections 75 percent never received an autopsy so that's 75 percent of, of, of these deaths that uh the families needed to have uh independent autopsies done how many of those men did not have families they just died and were cremated thrown away taking the boot hill and there's no telling you know what these necrophiliacs and uh these correctional people what they've done with the remains so um here's the the craziest part of this entire thing um i did some digging into this uh medical examiner uh this uh andrea minyard she's on facebook as andy minyard uh a-n-d-i minyard and through my investigation i've concluded that she may be affiliated with a biker gang called the punishers it's a law enforcement biker gang and they have uh several chapters and they're online touting the fact that they have shit like national enforcers and things of that nature. I mean, this it, it, it's the clan, folks, plain and simple. And it's in your face. They're not hiding anything. OK. And, you know, they seek to recruit uh, EMTs and anybody in law enforcement, period, 
but they have a specific faction that recruits correctional officers. Hmm. With this woman uh, being having ties to this organization in any kind of way, a biker gang called the Punishers that recruits correctional officers. She should never come anywhere near an inmate autopsy. Ever. Like, that's a conflict of interest like no other. Okay? If she's actually a member of this biker gang, she could easily be receiving orders from correctional officers or whoever the hell else telling her, don't look into that. How many correctional officers are affiliated with this same biker gang that work at Santa Rosa? You got to think about this. The medical examiners associated with a goddamn biker gang. She's, I mean, <laughs> to me, it looked like she's, you know, working for them. She's gang banging. A gang banging medical examiner. If they say don't do it, she ain't doing it. And she's refusing to do these autopsies. So, uh, this man dies. There was no autopsy performed to see whether or not he had been poisoned like I had. She probably knew that was most likely the case. She probably saw the pattern. He was well up until he got to Santa Rosa. He obviously, something that there was something different at Santa Rosa that wasn't happening at the other institution that coincided with this man losing his life due to medical neglect or poison or whatever. She didn't do it. And I personally sus suspect that the orders came from this biker gang that she's affiliated with. Crazy, crazy. And, you know, medical examiners and gangs is something I could not have even thought of, <laughs> you know, but I think the craziest thing about this whole thing is that there is a loophole that makes it legal for a medical examiner to say, I'm not doing an autopsy. That means there are thousands of people who died in the custody of the state, in the custody of the government. And there was never a legal conclusion as to why they died. Well, legal based on Florida law. It's Florida legal to just bury a person and, and not ask any questions. But it shows something else. The state of Florida is clearly the most corrupt and we have the most Jim Crow-esque laws on the books. On the books. And learning about this loophole uh, clearly demonstrates to me why uh, we're in this enigma. We're in this uh, this ether of evil. And uh, it's, it's, it's as clear as day to me now that uh, this is something like it, 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 at first it never made sense and now it makes perfect sense. We're in this on purpose. We have so many questions because the laws were written to make us question things that legally we can't even challenge. But we're stuck. I don't know what's in the Florida air to make everybody, you know, continue voting for these Republicans. But that's the reason, because it wasn't a correctional officer who wrote that law. It was a Florida lawmaker. And it was a bunch of other Florida lawmakers who concurred with that law. So uh, we're in no man's land. No man's land. And uh, it's dangerous groupthink. Uh, white supremacy at its finest. And uh, there is no way out. <laughs> Looking at this and, and seeing that now. Because before I always wondered, you know, how come nobody's challenging the legality of any of this stuff? Maybe if I can 
you know, get this stuff into the course, I can see some headway. It's all legal. It's all legal. And um, you can trace the intentions all the way back to your vote. 